Hi, everyone, and welcome to Cult Catch Up. I'm Henry, and joining me as usual is Andy. You all right, mate? Hello. I'm very Good. well. It's Monday. Right. We're loving it. <laughs> it's into the groove now. This is this is episode proper episode two uh, of our regular uh, short format format podcast to go alongside Culture of Paint. Um, and incidentally, on Culture of Paint, we're going to have there's no show for September, but we got two shows uh, in October. Uh, so that's two of the live shows coming uh, in October with uh, Rich and Matt. But news. Let's jump straight into it. Yeah, if I can yeah. get things working now. I've listened to the uh, always appreciated feedback from people uh, and they want more slides so i've tried to make lots of slides okay <laughs> but that, that might derail everything uh, but we'll find out and see uh, how it goes um, what so, they don't yeah. know is how much we rely on matthew for the slides is the slide god no yeah <laughs> i knew they were a pain in the bum to do i did not realize quite how laborious they were until i've started doing them so um yeah first up freak wars so an event over in spain um, that you wanted to have a chat about and it's been all over the, well, certainly my socials and I'm guessing yours. Um, yeah. Yeah. So done done a little bit of homework. So Freak Wars has been going on since sort of the mid-teens, 2015-ish, under a few different names. Essentially, it's a great big hobby convention it's grown into, right? You've got um, gaming events, you've got painting events, you've got seminars uh, and all sorts. And it was obviously, given what we do, it was the painting stuff. Uh, we wanted to have uh, a little bit of a chat about and being a contest in spain kind of expecting pretty good things right yeah i um i looked at all the pictures online and i thought Do you know what this looks like a show i'm missing out on so i uh i reached out to mark and i said you know what do you think of freak wars is it worth me coming and he said that uh you know the venue's wonderful and it does look excellent he said it's not like um SMC where you're in the hotel and that and uh, the event space is there and I think that's a good thing um, and he said you know you're in Madrid nice mm -hmm. weather great event um, so yeah it sounds excellent I think it's something that uh, you and I should try and do get a stand there would be good but, absolutely um, yeah I've been looking on the website it's it's, it's fab it's do you know it reminds me kind of you know what we want to do with MPO really um, yeah, I think that, so. I liked um, how they started it off when it was music and minis before yeah. it was Freak Wars. That's, I've, that's a fab idea. Um, well, I think they do it for um, for the love of it, not for profit, is um, mm. what I get the impression of. So uh, that Yeah, there was something about not crowdfunding, but that type of thing, I think, as well, to get it to the bigger venue, mm. um, which is interesting. I mean, obviously, you know, as, as well as I do, trying to put these shows on, unless you've you've got the backing of like a... A private company or something like that it's not it's not cheap no um, so. no the, the venue is <laughs> is tough and um yeah if you're going to these independent events then uh get tickets spend money there because uh yeah it's actually tough it's tough to uh tough to make a profit and they're my favorite thing so uh it's kind of changed my perspective on them and but yeah. this one's great mate like i'm i'm 100 like keen for this one yeah, I think we get the get the Any Kickstarter out the, and go, right? Spain as well. Yeah. Have we said anything about the Kickstarter? I can't remember if we have or not. It's coming, I am in, it's coming in no coming in November. So uh we're You'll talking a lot, of it. a lot more about that. November. <laughs> but yeah, tell me so I'm gonna put some pictures up from the various things. Also, I'm really sorry, guys, if we talk over each other at all. There's just a tiniest bit of lag um with this. So we're gonna try and, and mitigate that best we can uh, we're while excited. we're while we're chatting. I know. Um, we don't tend to talk much outside of recording, so it's quite nice to uh, an actual catch up. Catch up. It's genuine. <laughs> there we go. Best of <laughs> show, Alejandro Blanco Blanco. I think that's my. That's pretty good, actually. That one, I think. Um, yeah, this mm. is uh, obviously one of our one of our favourite sculptors, anyway. Um, yeah. and a, a lovely little take on. <laughs> they uh, are they planting Christmas trees. Is that what they're doing? Yeah, or, or maybe basil or something. Yeah. Mm. looks yeah. great love it hope they're not setting fire to those christmas trees hmm. that'd be uh... so is this the is this the spinners that this is done on or is this the earlier one of the witches no it's the new one the spinners right. yeah yeah <laughs> it's a great idea i never would have thought of it myself <laughs> but uh yeah it's pretty epic right it's pretty it's pretty full on and it's nice as well to see so it, it freak wars the painting competition anyway uh, it's that classic open format, correct? Yeah. Um, so people can enter a body of work uh, and be judged on it. 
Uh, there's various different, uh, not ability levels. What's the correct terminology for it? Ju Just judging level. standards, Le judging levels. levels. Yeah, judging cool. levels. Level. Um, and uh, particularly what I thought was really cool was that they've included things like traditional artwork, sculpt, so illustration, sculpting, um, and we'll come to in a little bit um, armies as well, which I think is is great for a, as so many of us are, is a gaming fans, right? Be that Warhammer, be that Infinity, be that, you know, Malifaux, whatever. Um, so I think it's really cool to try and include that within it. Um, but this was the one that really caught your eye, right? Andrea's... Uh, Did this not win the best of show? And I thought this was the best so of show. So this one, painting, fantasy, master, display, gold. Oh, I, I thought um, this was... I thought the... Um... The woodsman mm. in the middle was the uh, was the best of show. Well, I'm ripping this straight off the Freak Wars website. Oh yeah, you're right. I just yeah, mm. I just went off of some WhatsApps, <laughs> so I got told bad information. Um, That's all right. Yeah, wonderful collection though. Really, really cool, eh? And really, really varied. And yeah, it I reminded the the little backdrops is my favourite. Yeah, I like the um the circle with the piece in. I think it's a lovely presentation, right? Mm, absolutely. It's not, it's not a backdrop, but it it frames it. Yeah, I just think yeah, there's there's loads of things you can do to present minis wonderfully, and not that it's a bad thing, but people just kind of copycat these things. Um, well, we spoke about it, didn't we, on a on one of the live shows a fair while back? Actually, was do we think we're going to start seeing the evolution of of presentation? Um, and uh, you know, we saw the evolution from you know just a wooden plinth got the resin plinch you've got the different plinths then you're getting framing seems to have been quite popular um the last year or two but then you're also starting to get silly plinths you know as well then artwork on the plinth of the miniature coming out um it's gonna be exciting to see what what people come up with um again to, to help your miniature stand out right yeah it's um you know as, as we showed earlier we'll see if i can get the slide back up the way you're seeing the miniatures displayed here for the contest this is fairly common you know as as a sort of industry standard for want of a better term um for how your stuff's displayed so actually there's no bad thing trying to make your work stand out a little right no um, i mean yeah. look you know you, you might think oh hey i'm gonna do a backdrop that'll stand out and then look at this <laughs> <laughs> i can see two moons in one feet of space <laughs> it's a classic though isn't it it's like it's like them viral videos that popped up a few years back you know some bloke on the street doing the like the rattle can galaxies mm. and things like that um but it, it, it's going to be interesting to see what people do to uh because in my opinion you know you're trusting the judges to be completely impartial and not not at all swayed by things like backdrops right as in every miniature there's getting the same level of of attention initially mm -hmm. but i think as a someone who's simply displaying my work there's definitely some fun to be had i think to to make help make those pieces a bit more memorable or or jump out right yeah yeah they always stand out the best ones um mm. i yeah i don't know people say oh judging is hard and it is but it's not you just have to look at every mini <laughs> just go through <laughs> just go through and look at every one um and yeah but you do can... put your minis on plinths because it makes yes. it an awful lot easier oh yeah if, it, if it's a gaming base then it's not getting anything <laughs> you're not allowed to say that you said that on the mpo thing and people got very very upset Oh, they you did. Know, yeah, old big time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the amount, the amount of things I will shield you from. Uh, um, here we go. So let me just give yeah. you an example, though, because uh, at Nova, you are not allowed to enter without one. You Beautiful. are not allowed, and people were apparently going and buying like really weird stuff, like a lunchbox and <laughs> and blue tacking them. Like, yeah, that's fine, but you know, this, the however, the, the Kinder Egg. That's a classic, right? The half a Kinder Egg oh, yeah. plastic, you know. That's great. Ca capsule thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is what I was talking about, the, the different categories. So the uh, one of the categories is, is army. Um, and I love this. As, as someone who, I've said it multiple times before, I get more joy looking at an amazingly painted army than I do getting, you know, a, a one single miniature. Um, so I thought as a category, that was, that was really, really cool um, to do. And if you've got the space, brilliant. I'm you know, desperate to do a Void Dragon. I mean, I, I don't know how long it took. It, you know, as soon as the Silent King came out, I had my idea for that, and I did get to it eventually. Two and a half, three years later, I don't know how long it took, but I've always um, had my eye on the Void Dragon. I started re-sculpting it, and uh, 
I didn't know how big the Silent King was until I saw this picture. It's amazing. It's a huge, huge centerpiece. Because yeah. he's he's his was the body you used for your golden demon Necron yeah. Lord, wasn't it? Yeah. But I didn't realise all the stuff around him was so so enormous. Yeah, um, I mean yeah, really, I really spent cool. a lot of money just for that dude in the middle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, worry about Worth it. it. That's the way it goes. But yeah, I mean, the Void Dragon, I say that was, that's still one of the favorite things I've done for the channel. And it was really early on, like mm. mega, mega early on. But actually, he was lovely to paint. And Darren, uh, Darren Latham sculpted a new, is it the Nightbringer? Night, Haunt Nightbringer, isn't it? He's called mm -hmm. um, to sort of match up with this guy and the, the one having a terrible time on top of the, I love the Nightbringer. Top of the Silent King. I mm. wish they redid the Nightbringer. Um, I'm glad they added the Void Dragon because I think he's my favourite. Mm. Uh, but I'd love for them to. I just love Necrons, really. I think they've got, you know, over time they've developed a really cool background fluff aesthetic, yeah. and um, I yeah. do miss some elements of the older aesthetic, which is why I did that Necron Lord, and I was super passionate about making that Lord. Um, mm. But yeah, I, I love Necrons. I think they're underrated well, i mean you said yeah it's funny you, you say that i was looking at them literally this week there's some books have come out and there's there's the fiction surrounding the necrons i know you're not necessarily into the books and all the rest of it but there's there's been several books on them over the last couple of years that have been really well received um and i don't read a lot of 40k stories anymore um, but i was tempted to pick some necron stuff up because i think it sounds like they've kind of got that um the villains of the galaxy type type vibe going i love them um, and the i was like that's, that's quite fun wow uh, well, but do you, do you remember when the whatever the that edition was launched with the new necrons and they and the silent king was back and it was this incredible like oh the whole galaxy is going to change and then we didn't hear anything from for four years well no it was just to sell the the release that month mm. wasn't it shame this, though isn't it was that you say, they've got um an amazing model range absolutely amazing model range now so, uh, but yeah, but anyway, back to the competition. Nice to see it all displayed, you know, like uh, like it should be. Yeah, that's um, a one wonderful display. Yeah, mm. really. I like the uh, I like the tone they've done for the basing. Um, mm. When I was when I was looking at references for mine, I was actually looking at Tomb Kings because I thought mm. the um, like the composition of some Tomb King dudes and the the basing uh was kind of cooler and uh this reminds me of that it's really like sci-fi egypt right yeah absolutely and i think that's a i think that's a parallel a lot of people draw right i think it's fairly deliberate um but uh but yeah you just sort of peer it and you've, you've got that what's his name zerus luminor zerus or whatever it is the yep. big lad bottom right again just amazing mini horrific actually one of the um, most great yeah. things <laughs> pretty, done right yeah it's pretty horrible um but then yeah, mm. don't need to stare at this one any longer. Got uh, got plenty plenty of things to be not painting mm, without adding it, adding another one. <laughs> um, and yeah, and one of the other categories was illustration, which I think's absolutely fantastic. Um, and yeah, wow. something I I certainly would like to, for us to to add when the time is right. Um, and this was I just got uh, bronze, I think it was, but I just I just thought it was super cool. Um, so <laughs> you know, I put it up. Um, but I would say you know if you've got if you've got illustration as a category, I suspect you really need to be having a different set of judges or some judges that are, you know, qualified. Yeah, some will be well, well, or, you know, well versed in it. Both, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so um, yeah, by all accounts, really exciting looking uh, looking event. I'll pop the link in the description so you guys can go and check it out, and if you fancy it, uh, make the trip for prequels 2025 which i don't think they've announced anything about yet but um the last few have been in madrid at this at this cool building um so i'm guessing it'll be uh be there um so yeah the other bit of news i wanted to take a quick look at was the obviously the release of space marine 2 the video game which presumably is why there's not an awful lot of hobby going on around uh around the internet um at the minute has this um, come out is it Yes. I haven't seen anything about it. Well, there you go. No um, social medias. But yeah, long, long anticipated, long overdue, long delayed. Mm. Um, the follow up to to the first one. Did you play the first one? Played the first one a few times. Yeah, I loved mm. it. Um, mm. Really, really loved the first one. Uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of things in it. Yeah, very memorable. You know, yeah, it was getting the Thunderhammer. 
Um, <laughs> really like the uh, the main Chaos Lord as well. Love the mm. aesthetic of him. Nemeroth, I think he's called. That sounds good. We'll go with that. And I just thought I wish the minis looked like that for Chaos. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've seen a few. Uh, so there's a, the multiplayer for this apparently is very good, and I've seen some of the skins people have been showing for the various different. And and yeah, it's it's got a little bit of that. Oh, that looks really cool. Um, the models don't. No. <laughs> um, or not yeah. as cool. Some some of them still look very cool. Um, but yeah, obviously the biggest change of this is Titus and his and his chaps are um, Primaris now, aren't they, as well? So that's uh, a, a slightly different a different look. But Nid's cool. And as I say, massively delayed. Um, you, you would have to imagine the idea was it came out roughly the same time as the last edition of 40K, which was Leviathan focused on nids and ultramarines and everything back when a miniature came out for titus um but uh yeah i mean that's kind of what i wanted to talk about with it i mean i i have i have not bought it yet um i bought an xbox when they announced it was getting done Did you? yeah like years ago mate to, to to play it um and it's just so it's literally sat propping up a gate at the moment um but uh but yeah i really wanted to to chat more about the minis around the release so you've got a few uh, influencers, content creators, whatever you want to call them, uh, I saw had received the sort of, I don't know what you call it, like super duper launch box version of the game, which came with this sort of um, multi-part statue thing of of, uh, of Titus in the, uh, I don't know really, having a bath. Um, and <laughs> the ever interesting joy toy uh, you can get a, a Lieutenant Titus from them as well. Mm. So you can po pose him up like He-Man and whatnot. Um, and then this. <clears throat> so this is, what you, this is what you... It's rubbish, isn't it? Like, I don't want to be mean. I don't want to be horrible and all the rest of it. But this video game is huge. The response to it has been, uh, from what I can gather, overwhelmingly positive. Um, so they sold 2 million, I read. I haven't looked at the numbers on that, but going off the positive, like the review ratings and going off, you know, my various friendship groups. Um, yeah, it's been hugely well received. And if you go on the Games Workshop website right now, the only thing you can buy is a mouse mat with with it on. And I just don't get it, mate. Like, what's what's the deal? Yeah, this is a company that that will you know, someone sneezes and that's enough inspiration to make another Primaris Lieutenant. Um, and and I don't get it. I do not get it. Firstly, I don't. I don't think this model reflects the the, the character from the video game very well, or the rest of it. But also, you can't buy him if you want to. Sold out, or no? He just he was on sale like a year ago, right? Um, and uh, like when the game, so the game, if I remember rightly, the game was meant to launch this time ish, um, twenty twenty three. I think it's almost a full year late. Uh, I'm sure people will correct us uh, in the uh, in the comments. Um, but uh, but yeah, I just and that and that's when yeah that's when the uh, when the mini comes out. I'm just here we go. 25th of May 2023. Wow. So you could buy the board game based on the video game. So Space Marine, the board game, uh, and it was this model and a bunch of the termagants, presumably the new termagants would have been roughly yeah that would have lined up wouldn't it with the um with the release so again that probably made loads of sense right that was when the game was going to come out and you know so so on and so forth um but yeah if you go on you go on there now you can't you can't get hold of him and i just thought it was odd that they either didn't redo him like as in just re re-release him now um or or in fact take the opportunity to re-sculpt him they'll be going back on their word though right so i imagine what's happened is the video game, you know, changed their date and GW didn't. GW mm. were on time, running mm. like clockwork. And, you know, because I guess if the game came out that time, you'd have had Leviathan come out and you'd be like, yeah. oh, this is plenty. So uh, I'll give them a little bit of, um, yeah, leeway on that because I imagine they were on time. The video game messed that up. So but I, um, I'm not disagreeing. Yeah, on that. It's just it's a year plus later now. E even just a reprint of this guy. You know? Yeah, I, just I seems, agree. Just seems odd. Um, and as we've talked about 
you know, umpteen times, possibly not here, but certainly on the Patreon uh, episodes of this podcast, um, the, the posing of some of the dynamic assault Marines is is a little questionable. Um, you know, and I think it's, you know, as, as the internet is wont to do, like I think this is kind of named as Titus falling over or Titus slipping on something. Um, and it's just skipping. I don't know, man. It's it's just a shame. Like I, it, it, that that's that's all I'm getting at. Really, with it is, you know, it's it's a cultural moment. Um, yeah. Spruce Marine Two has been really anticipated, really well received. Everyone loves it. Most people love it. Um, just seems a real shame. I can't go out and buy buy a buy a Titus and 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 do him. You know. Um, so. I guess is 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 what it is, but you know this is what the short format's for, right? To be able to look at the news. You can though, if you want to spend an obscene amount of money, like twelve hundred dollars, I think Worth it is, it. can get this this version, which is outstanding. It's um, I've seen it in in the flesh, and it's worth it. Um, mm. I think about I think about what I would charge for a commission, mm. and it would be more for just the paint of something like this. So. Yeah. And, you know, maybe I've got some bias because I met the dude that paints it. But it is like, you know, it's people are just painting these. It's not in a factory and or anything. It's, yeah, dudes are just making and painting these. Great sculptor, great painters. Um, and it's a brilliant sculpt. Oh, that's it. It's the sculpt, right? Look at it. Look how flipping cool that is. It's a proper and I know old... Space Marines are Space Marines. I get it. A lot of people find them boring. I do not. I not, think not awesome. good ones. <laughs> right, not exactly. good ones. And this one just shows you how cool, you know. And uh, what I love about this, it's it's got everything right. It's standing on the rock. It's waiting to do something, so it's not in the sprinty pose, you know. And everyone's like, "Oh, it's just there." But it looks really heroic. Got a huge presence to him. Um, the head obviously looks like the video game because it's, it's larger, so it is easier to realize to a degree. But you know, I, I would argue. There is there is probably a a compromise between this and what we got. Um, it's not too bad on that lad, um, but uh, but yeah. If you do, you remember there was there was the there was a head in the old Stern Guard box, the old man face, which was no no not the old man. You know, you love one. There was there was Titus's head in the old Stern Guard box. Um, it was a really really nice head. I used it on um, a medicine conversion, but it was like. You looked at it and you straight away knew, oh, that's so and so from the video game. I remember, yeah. Whereas I think you look at this and I, I'm not sure if I showed anyone that they, they think it was anything other than a Space Marine intercessor. It's um, tough because actually, twenty eight mil or 30, whatever size they are, it's it's hard to get the details that transfer from a video game. There's only so much you can do. Um, yeah, and then it, then it's just. Yeah, horrible to cast. Whatever, we all know that. Um, <laughs> so a bigger figure like this, you you just got more leeway to make it accurate, spot on. So for me personally, I just like bigger scale stuff because you can get it more accurate. And I think we're often dissatisfied with with sculpts um, because it has limitations with the size. But still, mm. they can still be posed well, uh, for sure. I think that's it, isn't it? There's, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. I'm sorry if you can hear a dog barking. By the way, that's my neighbour's uh, neighbour's puppy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, oh, I don't know, man. Just getting. I don't want to be too negative. It's Monday morning. I don't want to. Don't want to bring anyone. I'm feeling bring great, anyone, mate. Uh, bring anyone positive. down on it. I don't know. I just. Anyway, I'm not going to get. Space Marines. I like cool Space Marines, and then I don't. Well, I'm not buying is, it. I kind of just briefly wanted to touch on that. So as I said, I I bought the Xbox to to play this game years ago and i've chosen not to get it and that's simply because i don't have time right now i need to paint stuff for work and if i do get any free time i've got two armies sat there that need more work doing on them um and i just thought yeah it was potentially interesting to chat about you know have you had any video games that perhaps have taken over your life yes. and uh, and, well, and, pre and prevented um prevented things getting done um, and I hope I got the right one for you. Yeah, um, best game ever made. So, uh, so there we go. Yeah. So, are you gonna pick this one up at all? You pick Space Marine Two up? No, because no. Um, video games are very unhealthy for me as a person, as an individual. Um, 
someone said our oh, video games are good for your mental health and i said for me they're very bad for my mental health because uh i've got no one to take it off me when i was a, <laughs> i wasn't i wasn't actually allowed video games as a kid until maybe 15 but even then it was like real strict you know 6 p.m till 7 p.m that is it Boom. Yeah, yeah. so now i've got no one to stop me i, I could play video game for 10 hours straight you know it's, mm. it's just not good for me um and i feel healthier when i do something like painting a mini so mm. you know uh, i really want to play it i really really do but i have learned that it's not good for me so uh, i've just done tears of the kingdom which is the second zelda game uh, after breath of the wild for the second time probably put 300 hours into that game no problem and i don't even like it that much you know I mean, <laughs> uh dawn of war was really unhealthy for me you remember yeah. last year yeah no tw maybe 2022 I, no, got... I think yeah was it was it last year yeah anyway i got dawn of war again which is a 20 year old game and it ruined me mm. <laughs> i was like shall i do some exercise nah i'll play a campaign <laughs> it's, just, it's just not good for me it's just they're so fun that re i don't want to do real life so uh yeah I'll, I'll wait for the next Zelda in seven or eight years, and then I'll play that. But now I will get around to playing Space Marine, but I don't have an Xbox or a PlayStation. They're very expensive these days. I think Jamie's going to lend me his Xbox, so I'll, uh, maybe I'll just do the campaign, give the Xbox back, and that'll be fine. Nice. But but maybe I'll wait till Christmas time, like Christmas holidays. That's my plan. Work work our bums off between now and then. Have a couple of weeks off over Christmas, and just sit in an absolutely We'll get the Kickstarter Space out, mate, Marine and then too. we're allowed. Should we have that as our yeah, rule? Yeah. So once once <laughs> you and I have uh, got a, a launched a Kickstarter and it's finished, then we're both allowed to play Space Marine Two. All right, Space Marine Two. Maybe yeah. that's how we should celebrate when we finish the Kickstarter. We'll just we'll play it. Let's have it as a stretch goal. Yeah, hand hoop, hand yeah. Hand. <laughs> <laughs> We accept donations if you want to get Maybe me an you. Xbox. Hey, okay. but uh, but no, I just yeah, it's again. I do think it's yeah, it's worth celebrating. It's a uh, a huge game for I will for say um, my fans. one one counterpoint though is um I do find it inspires me to do projects well that's what I was going to ask right because I know there's there was stuff because uh, this came out around the time we were concepting stuff for the Kickstarter that's coming now um and there was definitely some inspiration wasn't there even if it was just sort of character ideas as opposed to physical things um but you know I, I've had it there's a you speak at hundreds of hours is a game i've sunk i don't know well i've sunk a month into over the last few years i looked at my stats the other day um and you know they brought miniatures out for it and i painted them so there can be i guess that was kind of what what made me think about the space marine 2 thing mm. um because had there been a new titus miniature i probably would have been kind of tempted to have done him for the channel as i'm sure a million and one other creators will do um, but I'd have probably played the game a bit, you know. Just love, I love Ultramarines, like when they're... The, what, did Karl Kapinski do that artwork for the original? Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know if it was it was the concept art, I think. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's amazing. In fact, was it for this one? I thought it was we featured, featured one. Yeah, we featured it, didn't we, on a, on a, on a show. Um, That's peak Ultramarines for me. I don't... It, it's, it's when we were deciding what space marine chapter to do that's the thing we featured it on so if you yeah. go on the black black 10 plus playlist spoiler um we didn't choose ultramarines um but uh <laughs> yeah it's it's in that we're talking about talking about the artwork and yeah when Karl Kapinski does it or someone like him and they get it bang on I like that Weta sculpt right that's that's it right um, I like ultramarines they're great it's, it's pretty pretty amazing <laughs> so yeah so that's the news or some of the news that we wanted to touch on uh, anyway uh, and now we'll have a quick chat about what we've been up to um, at Cult. So in the second part of the episodes, we want to just kind of bring you guys up to speed with what's been going on uh, with us from point of view of making the videos for Patreon, for YouTube, and potentially other projects that we're working on at the minute, things like the Kickstarter, the Paint Range. Uh, we'll talk more about it in this middle section. Uh, but you have started a very exciting project oh, over yeah. on Patreon. Yep. Wood Elf. What else? Um, <laughs> actually, this goes on from our last point because um, a lot of my obsession with Wood Elves comes from 
from Zelda. Link. He's a, <laughs> he's a wood elf. Genuinely love all that stuff. Um, but yeah, this is the only wood elf model you can buy, <laughs> right? The only new one. New one. Yeah, yeah. Can um, you? Still, I don't. Can you even still get her? No, I got a couple off eBay. Mm. Um, I bought two in the end, sparesies. So um, yeah, big conversion. Um, took me a while. I'm not very good at sculpting, so I was trying to learn. Um, but the the cloth in the middle is actually that's all me all sculpted, which is cool. Um, and all the fur on one of the shoulders, and I think they match fairly well. So one of the shoulders is partly sculpted and the other one's completely sculpted that fur so quite hard to match the um mm -hmm. gw style of sculpting fur because i would do it quite flat well and also you were sculpting it with uh not millie putty you know you were sculpting it with sculpting putty um mm -hmm. as opposed to it being digitally sculpted but yeah. that was i mean we spoke about that before haven't we like since it will move to cad doing conversions kit bashes more elaborate work has become way more difficult yeah yeah, I, I I really I I really am enjoying my converting though, and my um, I actually started another piece which is a big conversion, and it was supposed to be for uh, Germany, and I liked it so much. I thought I don't have time to um to do this for Germany, so I hold this one for Adepticon, and then I switch to this project, and um, I still prefer my other idea, but um, this one I really enjoyed, and. Uh, Got a lot of tips from Valbjorn when I needed it. Um, and uh, But yeah, my, my sculpting skills improved. But I've actually been using just Milliput and uh, I've learned to do all the sculpting with, with just Milliput instead of the other putties. So mm -hmm. um, I do like the Tamiya putty, but I found with, with Milliput, if I catch it at the right time, it's probably my favourite. So um, yeah, I've tried every putty <laughs> with this project and uh, yeah, settled on that. But um yeah, really enjoyed the painting. Really happy with the color of the trousers, and I completely fluked that color. Um, I wasn't supposed to be actually painting it. I was supposed to just have a little practice, and I was like, oh, that's actually fine. I'll leave those. Um, so when you say have a little practice, you would you would practice on this miniature and then strip it? No, I was going to repaint. I thought I'd end up repainting it over the top. Over the um, top of it? Yeah, so I just, I just quickly I tried a color out, and I thought this color will probably be wrong tried sort of like uh, highlighting it and I was like oh, I think this is great how much have I mixed of this on the palette uh, not a lot it's going to dry out all right let's get this done um and in the video I sort of critique um talking about the colors I used and why and the critique that they're a little bit vibrant perhaps but I love them so uh yeah I'll keep that color in the bank which is nice but um... well so in the spirit then of this this section that you want to do <laughs> so I I'm, I'm just going to ask you questions about it Right. Um, and, and you can obviously, um, and now obviously I've forgotten them as I've, as, I, as I've said that to you, but one thing I did want to mention, you, you spoke to me in saying how the presentation of this video or the way you put this video together is a little bit different to what you've done before. So do you want to go into that a little bit more? Well, yeah, I, was, I genuinely was, I was painting and I was going like this and I was highlighting the horns and I was like, I've done this before and it's all the same it's all just like right, i'm going to do this brown and then i'm going to use this light brown i was like that's not the important thing so the the horns are burnt umber and some uh, two other browns you know what i mean and that's mm. that's not what's important um so i switched the focus and i i did the step by step for every color because i think there's some good colors there but i did just say the horns were this 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 and then talked about why really so um yeah just there's a lot of variations of brown and choosing specific ones at specific points you know so just um, a lot more talking about why you've chosen the colors you've chosen as opposed to yeah a recipe video yeah just like you know like the the cold brown of the horns is next to the skin you know you don't want to kind of get orange in the uh brown of the horns because then it's going to take away from the orange of the skin and it's just little things like that and um hopefully uh yeah that that's more important so that was just interesting but i think it gets to a point where you know i paint the gold and the gold's the same as i've done before there's a lot of non-metallic video so i just tried to uh switch the focus but i enjoyed that and um yeah i seem to have got some good comments on that so that's nice uh but yeah always always with the videos on patreon i kind of switched the focus to the why and i think mm -hmm. that 
as we build that library, you're going to end up repeating stuff. And as you know, when you're uh, when you're making videos, sometimes you do feel like, is this just a repeat of that? Uh, mm -hmm. And it is. And I think also sometimes people don't mind. <laughs> but that, <laughs> just 100%, like right? And, and we'll, we'll actually talk about that when we come on to, to the YouTube stuff. But I, I think you are right that people don't mind <laughs> a lot of the time. But also, for instance, you know, we may have covered something on a video and we haven't covered it for two years, three years, four years even. Um, we're different people that we were that long ago. There may be things we have learned you know having done those things repeatedly since that we can produce a better video we may simply be better at editing and putting videos together uh, than we were so i don't think there's yeah i don't think there's any harm in uh, in that side of it but it's i think it was just worth highlighting that as you say the the patreon tends to be either more niche products or projects rather um, that perhaps wouldn't wouldn't garner much attention if we did them on youtube but we really want to do them um or as you say much more sort of educational um lessons right R rather than just sort of painting painting how to's um, which i think uh, people have responded to brilliantly it's been really nice seeing seeing the comments you know the guys and girls on they want to they want to learn as well as just be entertained and you know enjoy uh, enjoy I watching think the psychology is important as well mm. so i i kind of think of these as video diaries as much as tutorials because it's like this is this is me going up towards the golden demon i think it's important to include your thoughts mm. because you can be very up and down and i think especially when it comes to painting competitions there's a there's a lot of psychology and there are different stages throughout your journey where you you know you experience growth there's a really good video by um roman actually about ego and i really mm. enjoyed that um and it's talking about like when you lose a competition, like how you feel with that. And I think certainly when I was younger and earlier, I'd probably take it worse. And you still feel bad now, but it's, you know, there's all those cliches, um, you know, when you, when you lose, it's just what do you do with that? Do you get, do you get annoyed and sack it off, or, uh, throw your toys out of the pram or do you go, okay, well, I just need to be better. And, and I think, um, I think people ask me a lot about how I felt with the Eldar unit. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought, you know what, Every, it's all irrelevant. What I should have, what I should have done is painted something so good that it was undeniable. It should have got something. So I, so people, you could discuss whatever, maybe it should have got something. It, it's irrelevant. It didn't. So what I have to do in the future is be better and really make sure that it's, it's going to get something. Cause I've just, I've done everything, you know what I mean? So I think that, uh, yeah, as you as you get further into it, then you just kind of develop a better attitude, right? And mm -hmm. uh, certainly coming into this one more relaxed, um, but also trying harder. I don't know, which kind of seems counterintuitive, but I'm, I'm trying to be more careful with everything, but for the joy of it and being happy with it in the end, as opposed to, you know, trying to win, it's like, it's that personal satisfaction because you're always annoyed about the stuff that you know you don't like. And actually, mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter, like, uh, if it doesn't place or something like that, as long as you're satisfied with all the little parts. So, uh, yeah, I'm just painting what I want, which is a wood elf. So it's fine. <laughs> I paint Good. it anyway. Yeah. Um, no, absolutely. But yeah, well, I think that's important to talk about. It's a great video. I'm looking forward to the rest of the series on it. Um, and I say, I think people, people are enjoying uh enjoying watching that as well uh, over on patreon the legends over on patreon that they are um so obviously on patreon you've got these videos you've got other podcasts and whatnot as well um and then there's youtube that we do so you may have noticed there was not a youtube video last week i've got questions <laughs> yeah come on let's have it i can't sit down well, the stool's too low he'll be looking at my forehead but yeah come on do you want me to say what our plan was for Mechanicum and then uh, go into that? Or do you want to say? <laughs> well, so, so yeah, we're, we're doing a Mechanicum video. We wanted to do sort of one Mechanicum video. Uh, and we were going to do it when the box, the launch box came out. Um, and then they announced the Thanatar would be coming out a little bit later. And I sort of said to you, oh, mate, look, why don't I just do one of each of the robots and we just have one Mechanicum video with 
with all the robots in, all the automata in. Um, be done with it. Um, felt like a good idea. And um, yeah, best laid plans, I guess. Um, it it it's just didn't get done in time. Um, and yeah, for various reasons. Wow. <laughs> A Thanatar on its own in a week is crazy, let alone them all. So mm. I think that Yeah. I think so. The the build the build time was one of the biggest issues. And we've spoken about this with with other videos that, that we've both done. And I think it's generally something I come up against more frequently because I'm doing different different minis, but there are you, you found out, I think, one of the Necromunda ones recently. Some of the Games Workshop models now take a long time to build. Like, a long, long time. And it is quite hard to uh, budget or allow for the time it's going to take to build something when they're all different. Um, you know, I'm fairly confident if I have to build a Space Marine, I know how long it's going to take me. Hmm. The issue I had with these guys is is the the Thalax and the Castellax uh, and the little thrall. There's going to be a thrall in it uh, as well. Um, absolutely flew together. They were a dream. So I was like, oh, this can be great. So I'd, I'd given myself a few hours to to get the Thanatar done. Um, and the Thanatar ended up taking me best part of a whole day to to get together. Now, it's a brilliant kit, in my opinion. Like, it's it goes together beautifully, but there are so many pieces. The instructions are not necessarily the clearest. Um, suboptimal. <laughs> suboptimal. Um, and again, I think when you work to such tight deadlines as we do, losing a day is a huge chunk of time. Um, but I wasn't feeling too bad on it. And then, unfortunately, I did the decals and all the rest of it, and the decals all frosted. I cover it in the video anyway, um, what's happened. Um, and again, so you've got to strip the model, you've got to go again. Um, so it's just, yeah, a, a sort of um, a, a shame, but I sort of said to you, I was like, I don't really want to rush this out. I think it's a nice video. I love doing the heresy videos. I think we have a really, really strong library now, you know, in our heresy playlist of 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 just great videos, I think, for army painting, um, Horus Heresy with, and some character level stuff as well. Um, so, yeah, so it's just going to be a little bit delayed. Um, which is why you didn't have it, didn't have it last week. Um, but I have really enjoyed it. Um, don't get me wrong, um, and and that's not always the case with a YouTube video. Sometimes you are, you know, creating content because it's the right content. Um, you know, and the Castellax actually, I've never liked that model ever. Never bought it. Never wanted it. The plastic one's amazing, and I found myself sitting there going, "Oh, wonder if you can do a Castellax army." Blah blah blah. This and like, no, behave. Don't be daft. I love your, your blue-gray um, you've chosen for that. It's nice, right? Um, uh, well, that was another thing for this video, um, some new recipes, because there's there's been an issue with certain paint supplies recently, um, namely Scale 75, the guys in uh, the States are having a real issue getting hold of it. Um, not so much in the UK, it's fine. You know, Element, Incom, they've all got scale. You can go, go, go and buy it now. But the American guys are having issues with it. So I sort of thought, well, you know, we do try and say the colors don't matter, like pick your pick the ones you like, use the ones you like kind of thing. But a lot of people just like to be given the recipe and and go. And I understand that. Um, so I've tried to use brands that are currently more readily available. Um, but one of the things I'm noticing as well, and that's the other video that's coming out this week, which is uh, to do with bone and, and horns, is that obviously you've got the Vallejo um redo that they've done recently so the new the new range of model color the new range of game color the paint's different i've got a point on that i don't really like it <laughs> and so i'm using old vallejo paints in these videos and i realized that no matter how often you say oh it doesn't matter about blah 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 it, it it's not helpful to people if i show you how to paint something with a paint you can't get hold of yeah right so i need need to start adjusting and until we've got ours out in the public domain, you know, we can't be using our paints to show you how to do it. Um, that really is not going to be long now, which is very exciting. We'll, we'll talk to you guys more about that. Now we have a concrete date, so we will be giving you a concrete date for it. Um, but yeah, so, it's, it's that, so the challenge for this video was to use more readily available paints. Um, and consequently, that threw up a couple of different 
recipes, which was nice, uh, including that that blue gray um, look. But I thought, what's the key? Said, what's the key blue gray for that? Don't want to spoil too much for the tutorial, but uh, it's all Citadel. It's all Citadel. Cool. It's also, in fact, the it's the red is all Citadel and the like rust gray or something. Gray is all Citadel and it's Corvus black. Oh, is it? And then it is Eshin, I think. Oh, okay. I think it's Eshin. Anyway, I've got it's it got on the desk, written down. Um, it hasn't got any oils or anything on it yet, or anything like that in this in this photo. Um, and then the lighter scheme is uh, is is uh, Tamiya's. But I wanted to cover a popular scheme, Xana, which is sort of the baddie, one of the baddies. I wanted to cover a sort of classic red, and then I thought a nice grey because some people like to put automata and stuff in their Legion forces. You can have them if you've got like various HQs. You can have certain uh, Mechanicum units in your army like indentured type Mechanicum. So I thought, nice generic grey, and then have your shoulder pad done in your Legion. I think it looks quite smart. Um, Too right. But the best thing, or my favourite thing I've discovered from this video, is the wash that I've put over the metals. Like, to the point where I want to go out and buy the, buy the constituent parts and just have a pot permanently mixed Interesting. up. Interesting. Looking for forward to seeing that. Love it. I won't ask you what it is, because, <laughs> yeah, the, the video. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll watch but the yeah. video. So, so yeah, mechanic and video coming when it's done. Um, um, yeah. I just want to touch or back on the model color thing because I was gushing over model color in my Patreon video. I ended up using uh, mostly model color, and I've used a lot of AK recently in, in our paints. Um, but there's a few family favorites I used for the green, and uh, I forgot how much I love them, uh, mm. the finish. So I just used a paint called Medium Olive, boring name. But it's so good to work with. It's just amazing. And I thought, I'm going to use this for a bust I've got to do with a green tunic the same. This paint is the best. It's the perfect level of satin. It's not too matte like scale or whatever. And um, yeah, lovely Patreon was like, totally agree. They're great. Uh, by the way, they don't make golden olive anymore. Yeah, they don't make golden oh, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, doesn't, doesn't it make you excited, though, about our paint? It does. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and frustrated, but excited. Well, um, the one thing about the only downside to model color is they do not airbrush at all. They're mm. awful. Um, was I'm very pleased ours airbrush fantastically well. But, um, but yeah, I, uh, I want to try the new model colors, so I'm going to order a few, uh, and I will be sad if they've changed. Um, there was just nothing wrong with them. They didn't need changing. And I also love the old packaging. I don't know why. <laughs> so I want to. I really want to go to Element. I might ask Byron actually. Say, can you? Can I specifically order? Um, well, mate, the range. This is this so chip over at Incon. So Incon Gaming in Cheltenham, where we run a lot of our classes. We ran our first ever class. Um, he when he got the new range in, he sold all the old range off, like bargain bucket, like pound a bottle, and. I was like, oh, I'm up there teaching in a couple of weeks. I'll just go and grab a load of it then. And there was like nothing left. I was there it was. Go gutted. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. But yeah, so long story short, yeah, that's why the, the colors are what they are in this, uh, uh, in this video. And I've added a few different things as well in this video. I hope I'm useful to people like uh, talk a bit more about like the tools I'm using and why I'm using them and stuff like that. So I, I want—I just want it to be a comprehensive Mechanicum video because um, I can't really see us doing many other ones. Um, so it's like, well, why not get it right, you know, in in in, in one? Um, but consequently, yeah, it's run over. So it's run over into this week's videos. Um, and one of this week's videos that I wanted to do was focusing in on bone and horns um, because it's something I really, really like painting. Um, I don't know what it is. Always have done. Just, just love painting skulls and bones and skeletons and and and, and horn particularly. Um, in the bone zone. I don't know what it is, man. It's just I find it very relaxing. Um, I like not working with many colours, um, and I I wonder as well because it's I don't like shortcut it ever, and I do shortcut quite a lot of other stuff. <laughs> the video for well like when you're getting the videos out right for army painting and youtube like i'm like what's the most efficient way of doing this blah 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 like bosh 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 but i don't ever tend to do that with bone because it's not hard it's not complicated it's it's a simple process it's just you know it's layering up and glazing and layering up and glazing but i love doing it and so i just do do it 
Um, yeah, me too. But, um, but I'm enjoying it. So this video, yeah, this video will include some different sort of recipes for, I say for horn um, and for bone. Uh, and I've used a cool mini from Warcrow, which is like this big orc shaman that's covered in like bone armor. And then I'm using the head off that new Skaven uh, Vermin Lord, the Vizic Scour model, because he's just got, he's amazing. You kind of see it in the photo. He's amazing rams horn type horns and stuff. Um, so, uh, yeah. Been thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying it. Sorry it's a little bit late, but a Good lot of pretty, uh, pretty, pretty relaxed and, and cool with us uh, <laughs> getting stuff done when it's done. Um, we try. Rather than rushing it, yeah, it's not not for not for lack of hard work, that's for sure. Um, been working through the weekend as well, so um, should be good. But yeah, so a good week on uh, Patreon. You're going to be carrying on with the Wood Elf, right? Yep. So that one, when you're watching this podcast, the Wood Elf one's already up there, uh, and then the this week you'll get these other ones uh, over on YouTube. So there's a couple more things to close out, and then I think we're done. Okay, so that's what we've been up to uh, on the various channels. Um, just before we say bye-bye, something I wanted to bring up. We spoke about it on the last episode uh, about a chap called Paul Sawyer, uh, the co-founder of Warlord Games uh, and uh, a White Dwarf editor back in the, the 90s who's a, a definite hobby hero for a lot of people. Um, if you're not aware, Paul was diagnosed recently with a, a terminal illness um, and step back from Warlord. Uh, and one of the things that Warlord have done have created a charity miniature. Uh, so this is Paul uh, as a, a parachute regiment um, sergeant, uh, which obviously you can use in your games of, of bolt action, which is something that what Warlord make. Um, and all the proceeds from this miniature will go to the Brain Tumor charity, uh, which is something he wanted it to go to. Uh, so if you want to find more about that, uh, I'll pop the link down in the description, um, but go and check out uh, Warlord Games. I've ordered a couple because um, it's, it's a cool mini. He was a uh, you know he's a great man uh, for for the hobby. Uh, so go and go and check that out if you want to. So anything else you wanted to cover in this little catch up? No, I just like to say um, I think a lot of people enjoyed the post you put of the uh, the best single page of White Dwarf ever. Mm. Um, and I, I, have, I you, have you read it? Because the content's fantastic too. I've I've got it on my coffee yeah. table downstairs. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that I remember. I, well, however old I was when that issue came out, like I got it that week. Mm -hmm. You know, I got, I got it. I read it, and I was just couldn't believe how good the Beastmen were. Anyway, that's a whole episode. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it, I really enjoyed reading through the comments. Yeah. Um, uh, the internet's a scary place, and it was nice to read only nice comments and uh, just a lot of people remembering it like us. And uh, yeah, just nice to read only good things. And uh, absolutely, I'm glad you, know. you posted it. I think uh, people enjoyed it. I, it. I, th I think so. I think so. Well, um, I don't know whether we'll talk about it again in, in the live show, but there's in the article the bit I think a lot of people remember is that he had a quid or so left over. And rather than save it for next next month's minis, you just bought a bacon sarnie. I, I think, think everyone everyone, everyone like, loves it. You can't it, get a bacon right? roll for that yeah, price for one twenty five, right? But there's oh, it was well back in those articles. There used to be the time when the stores would have the like three for two deals and things on when they opened and and all of that. But there's there's some bits in it where he talks about um, not compromising with collecting his army. So he talks about how I've got a really small selection of minis because they don't have as many metal minis as as the other or plastic minis rather as as the other uh armies that the guys in that article were doing um and he's like but i don't want to compromise that like the beastmen are wild and and you know this i don't want a regiment of plastic ones all stood there identically with their halberds uh, and that's kind of and i thought that was just a very honest interesting like viewpoint um in 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 what's ostensibly a sales article you know um Keep which it, genuine. I, it, it was less so wasn't it back then but um but yeah it's a great tale, the original tale of four warlords go and pick it up i'm sure it's online in multiple different places now archives and uh, and all the rest of it so that's it from us for this one uh we're now going to go and record the patreon only section for it so addressing a load of q and a's from the patrons over the last week or so uh if you've got anything you'd like us to cover if you've got various accounts or artists that you'd like us to take a look at perhaps on the live show then get in touch with us at all of the usual places anything else mate nope i'm ready 
Right. Let's go and talk <laughs> about that. So thanks very much for watching, guys. Take care. We'll see you next time. Bye.